Hey guys, I am back from California. I just spent 12 days at Open Sauce Live and then a week in LA and then San Diego Comic Con for the first time. And um, suits broke, need to fix it. Fun fact, I filmed that intro five times and then I realized my microphone was off. So good thing I didn't start the video. Anyway, welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Frank and I just had one of the best times of my life over in California. I was fortunate enough to be invited to Open Sauce Live. It was a new event hosted by William Oswald, put on by William Oswald. My God, he was there too. Um, one of the coolest events I've ever been to. If you are thinking about going next year, go. I will be there every year as long as I possibly can be. It was so much fun, so many awesome creators. Here's a bunch of photos from it, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Then I spent a week in LA with my friends Benjamin Farron and Jacob Halter doing a bunch of shenanigans with uh, the Iron Man suit, with some other cosplays, and just having a good old time. And then it was time for San Diego Comic-Con, my first time being there. Now, a lot of us did bring costumes and cosplay to the con, however, with a lot of things going on in Hollywood right now with some certain strikes going on, it's not great looks to be promoting certain IPs and studios. So a lot of us opted not to wear our costumes to the con, so Starboost actually never made it into the convention center. Though I did wear it a few times to have a little bit of fun, do some dumb photo shoots, and while that was happening, things broke. And just from packing it in kind of a rush to get back home, things broke even more. So I wanna take this video to actually fix the suit. This is gonna be a general, hey, what went wrong, what broke, and how can we improve it for next time video? And when you travel with suits, armored cosplay, especially Iron Man suits, what should you bring to a Comic-Con? I have a little emergency quick repair bag sitting right there, you can't see it. And we're gonna talk about that. What are the little things you should bring? Obviously duct tape and super glue are a must, but when you're dealing with electronics, what am I bringing to a con? And maybe there's some stuff you guys haven't thought about. So let's change camera angles. I'm gonna show you what broke on the suit. It's not too bad. And we're gonna get to repairing it in the most logical way. So uh, yeah, camera change, woo! The first thing to fail was actually just some wires on the glove. Um, unfortunately, it just gotten, it had gotten pulled out. This is gonna be a super easy fix. I'm just gonna need to swap out this connector and re-solder, I'm probably not even gonna solder them, um, just reconnect the wires. This way the repulsor light works and I can actually do the uh, pew pew you know, noises. Next up were the tabs that hold the ab plates on. They're little magnetic tabs and then the ab plate sits there. Um, honestly, I might not repair these. Uh, they they kind of, they just stay. Like, that's it. Um, I might just add more duct tape there because that seems to be working just fine. Because um, then the ab plate, let me see if I can grab this. The ab plate here, let's do that. It just, yeah, it does that. And then I just need to do that and it and it stays so i might not fix that you might be you might be okay this was the next part to go um the cod piece waist piece um down where it goes between your legs uh, you get the idea um it had just snapped off just from the layer lines it was the way that it was printed and uh, eventually it just gave way. There is an elastic band, actually it's right here, that goes, that Velcros between the legs to hold the back of the cod piece to the front. Um, this is gonna be a super easy fix with some elastic bands, and I'm really probably not gonna weld repair it, I'm gonna make it like a flexible piece, and you'll see what I mean in a little bit. This over here was from shipping. Um, I didn't pack the suit coming back as well as I did going there. So it just broke while sitting in the suitcase. Um, it's not the end of the world. The only thing holding it together right now is some clear vinyl that is just right there. So I just need to put this back into position and it's really not the end of the world. It, it, you can't see it, um, but I'm gonna do a lot of weld repairs on the inside. I'm gonna add some rafts. Oh, I guess it already, did this already break? I didn't even realize that. Oh, the more you know. Anyway, easy fix. Um, and nothing broke on the chest. It just looks really cool and I wanted to show it off. Woo! Okay, first things first, let's get these gloves repaired. Uh, those are pretty cool, um, but these take probably some of the worst wear and tear. And just the way I have them designed right now, um, once I put the glove itself on and that's wearable, I actually take this very tiny battery pack and I stuff it into the forearm. Now I still gotta work with a little bit of placement, it can fit back here, but that's not, yeah, that's not the end of the world. Um, but the wires did break just from some pinch points. So I wanna get this glove, this glove works fine. This one, unfortunately, it just broke. Things happen, we'll be all right. Um, so I gotta strip back the wires here. This connection still seems solid, so I'm not worried about that. Um, and anytime you're doing any type of electrical work, take the batteries out, there's, there's no need for it. Um, I use a lot of hot glue when dealing with electronics. And if you want a connection to stay, 
I, basically, I want this, I don't want to be pulling on the actual connections here. So I wrapped electrical tape around the wire and I hot glued that. This way, when you go to pull it off, you're not risking damaging the wires. You're just ripping apart the electrical tape and then you can strip that back, peel off the hot glue, and then you just, you can start over from scratch. So let me strip this back and we'll start getting the new connector back on. Okay, I have everything pulled apart now. Now I just need to get these wires fused together. So that's gonna be super easy. You can use these, either use your wire strippers or whatever you want. And I'm gonna strip these back just a little bit right there. And then I don't need these wires to be this extra long. Uh, so we'll probably do like that length and then cut them back just a little bit. Um, fun fact, when dealing with most cosplay electronics, I don't solder. I don't really solder anything um, unless it's gonna be under a pulling load, but wires that are bending and moving around, they don't need solder. Um, historically, from my own experience, that actually makes the wires more brittle because it puts a hard point from the solder that co is constantly flexed and moved, and that's not what we want. For my wire connections, I twist them nice and straight, both connectors, like this. So I'm just making them into nice points. I'm hoping you guys can see this. And then I take, do the same for the opposite. Just spin those around. And then let's see if I can get a good angle here. Let's see right about there. I cross them in an X about halfway and I twist them over and around themselves like this. So now they are twisted together like so in one piece and they're pretty strong actually. I'm pulling on this pretty good. I def it's definitely not gonna fall off like that. And you can protect this however you want. You can use heat shrink, you can use electrical tape, which is what I'm gonna use. But this is how I've been doing my connections for years. I did this, I, I do this on cars when I work on them and uh, it hasn't really failed me since. And what I like about this method is if I ever need to go and swap the wires, you can actually strip back the electrical tape, unspin them, and usually you can pull them apart. So if you ever wanna swap out a connector or whatever, but if I solder these wires together, repairing them is gonna be a little more difficult yes you could desolder them pull them apart um, but I kind of just like doing it this way and that's the uh, that's the way that that's the way dad did it that's the way America does it and it's worked out pretty good so far so we're gonna get both of these connected and then we're gonna get them taped up and we're gonna go ahead and test the power on them I miss doing tutorials like this this stuff is just relaxing now, those are taped up. Again, you can get as extra with this as you want. I could put another uh, wrap of electrical tape around it. I could use heat shrink or whatever, but I'm just gonna do one more little band pass of electrical tape to hold them together and give them a little bit more strength. And this is also gonna give me somewhere better to hot glue the junction to this uh, little battery pack right here. I'm gonna remelt this hot glue and then run the connector just like that which is gonna be super easy. Okay, ready to test it out. So let's, uh, let's just connect the dang thing like that and let's throw the batteries in in some direction. Now, what's cool about this little battery pack I'm using, if it's wired backwards, it doesn't matter because I can just flip the batteries the other way. And uh, nope, got it wrong. So let's flip the batteries over and then it should work. Hey, we're alive. That hand is repaired. I love it. Easy, simple. And now I can be Iron Man again and make pew pew noises. Pew pew pew. Okay, so this next one is going to involve a little bit of weld repairing. I said I might not weld it before, but I think I'm gonna at least try to tack weld this back on just to hold it in place. And then we're gonna reinforce the inside in a way that will ensure that if it breaks again, the part will never fall off. This happened on my 85, uh, but basically we're gonna run um, elastic or nylon straps down this entire piece. So if it ever breaks off again, it'll keep, it'll stay in the same position, except it'll have a little bit of a flex to it. So not the end of the world, but let's get our soldering iron hot and then we're gonna start welding and melting this back together. If you ever need to weld repair a 3D print, usually when it breaks on layer lines, uh, the infill is gonna be your worst nightmare, uh, trying to fill in blank space. So having a little bit of extra filament to fill in the gaps with, can really make or break how strong that repair is gonna be. So definitely keep some on hand and just melt it in and it gives you way more structure to work with. 
Okay, slight change of plan because I printed this thing at such a low infill, I'm actually having a hard time getting any type of structure back into it. So we're gonna divert and use some raft material. And if you are printing cosplay, you should just have a bunch of this leftover sitting extra um, or sitting around. And it's just a thin piece of raft material from a random print and I cut it to fit. And we're actually gonna go ahead and just glue this in here with some hot glue. Um, and it's thin enough that, yeah, it, it doesn't have the shape yet, but once I cover the back of this with hot glue, it's basically gonna melt it into the shape and it's never gonna wanna come off. And that's exactly what we want. So uh, let's do that. And if I wanna be a little extra, I can sit here and like weld the edges of this raft into the print itself, but it's really not necessary and I'm kind of only doing it because I just talked about it, but it's really not the end of the world. Now, one more precaution I'm gonna take before I put the Velcro back in here. I'm gonna take that nylon banding I was talking about and I'm gonna glue one strip up the entire front of this. So this way, if it ever cracks again anywhere, the part's not just gonna fall off. Um, Cause uh, especially in an area like this, that could be very embarrassing and it's absolutely not something I want to happen. So we're gonna take some and just, we're gonna hot glue it right into place. Uh, you can super glue it, whatever you wanna do, but this Gorilla Hot Glue is extra AF and it's gonna suffice just fine. Newsflash, hot glue is hot. Ow. Good to go, a little bit of a precaution. Um, and then uh, this is the old Velcro that was sitting here that the straps came to. I ditched this, we're just gonna replace it with some new stuff. All right, all good. Cod crotch piece thing fixed. Let's move on to the butt plate. Okay, so this is the last piece to repair and it's gonna be very similar to the cod piece. Um, I really didn't realize that it broke along a weld line. I guess I had some under extrusion here at some point. Um, so that kind of sucks, but we're gonna do a very similar process. I'm gonna try to just weld the inside of it, getting it as lined as possible, because I obviously don't wanna go and have to paint repair this. Um, and luckily it's just a solid line right across the butt plate. It, it blends in, I'm not worried about fixing the outside, whatever. Um, and then we're gonna take some more raft material. I have whole sheets of this stuff printed, it's great. And we're gonna just put some strips in there and then I'll probably run, I don't know, maybe one elastic band this way, this way and this way, just for reinforcement in case it ever does snap again. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's get to work. All right, so the butt plate is repaired. Um, that weld came out great. Now that I'm flexing this and putting tension on it, I actually feel like it's gonna break in a completely different spot than where I weld repaired it. And that's what you want. I, I, it want you want it to be stronger than it was. Um, and I ran some banding down the inside just in case it does decide to snap again. Um, I'm not just relying on the, um, the clear vinyl to hold it together. And from a distance, honestly, not that bad, uh, unless people are walking around the con really staring at my butt, um, that's their own problem and uh, there's websites for that, so that's fine. So yeah, let's, um, let's get some of these parts back together on the table and I'm gonna put together a little kit and show you guys some of the stuff that I bring to cons as a just in case sort of emergency if everything fails and goes wrong. Yay! I told you, if you get into my shop, one more, Anyway, so hey guys, I'm here, we're done repairing the suit, and now I have laid out a bunch of stuff that I typically take to cons in case of emergency. Is my head in the frame? Cool, awesome. So we're gonna go over some of these things. I'll probably grab the camera and hold it just so you can see it because like, I could tell you it's a razor. I wanna show you, that. whatever. Now, if you've made a cosplay before, like an Iron Man suit or something, you probably recognize a lot of this stuff. And realistically, most of this can be used to repair an entire suit. Pending bringing a 3D printer with you, this stuff will pretty much get you to where you need to go. The two biggest things automatically I'm gonna suggest bringing is electrical tape and some type of duct tape. Now this is a permanent Gorilla tape, maybe not this strong, but some good duct tape. Um, versatile electrical tape really goes a long way. And then, glues hot glue this gorilla hot glue is amazing it's great for straps and buckles and it heats up it pretty quickly it's just invaluable to have next to that you're going to want to do something like quick activating super glue this is a two-part cyanoacrylate glue and it's an instant cure um, they do make an aerosol can that's actually the aerosol can right there, but that's a little big to bring to cons and then well the glue itself i lost the cap um, this stuff likes to leak but uh yeah this is 
amazing to have and it can repair most of the suit. Next, you're probably gonna wanna bring something like a soldering iron. This is my uh, plastic welding soldering iron. It, it, it still can do wires if I uh, clean off the tip right there with like a razor or something, but this is gonna help me do quick repairs. Um, the amount of things I've had to repair on the 85 after you know a suitcase mishap or whatever, I've lost count at this point. So definitely have one of these on you. And I mean, if you do bring some solder with you and you wanna solder your wires together, that's an option too. But like I said before, I don't, I don't really use solder anymore at this point. Um, so this is all like the real basic stuff. And then you start to get to more of the advanced stuff. Bring something to cut with, um, little wire nippers. I can strip wires with these. I can cut uh, plastic, glue. I, I can do a lot with these, but if you definitely wanna double down and bring an actual pair of scissors, that's totally up to you. I'm not gonna judge. If you're dealing with electronics, a very tiny cheap multimeter goes a long way in troubleshooting continuity. If I have a wire break up here in the shoulder and I'm not sure where in the arm it's broken, I can start doing ohms and continuity checks to make sure that that's actually where the break is. So this thing's like five or 10 bucks on Amazon. It's great, just don't leave home without it if you have electronics in your suit. Speaking of wires, bring some extra wire. This is actually a six wire conductive, it's all in there. I can strip it down and use it however I want, um, depending on what wires are in your suit. I also travel with an entire bag of different connectors, JST connectors, pins, servo wires, basically anything, anything we're gonna need to repair some of the electronics, the Alicia boards, any connectors in the wrist, like literally I had to do that at the con because this one broke too. So yeah, make sure you have enough wires and then the specific electronics that are in your suit. Now I have my LEDIs, I have my servos, I have some um, NeoPixels that are in the arc reactor. I'll travel with a couple extras of those. I, I usually bring two extra servos, I'll bring some extra LEDIs, and then if I'm traveling with my 85, I will bring some NeoPixel lights. Uh, Starboost doesn't have the same NeoPixel lights that the 85 does, so I don't need to worry about those if I'm traveling with, um, with Starboost. So I bring a little bit of extra, because I have had LEDIs burn out, I have absolutely had servos burn out, and you need to fix them on the fly. So yeah, make sure you um, think about what's extra in your suit. Oh yeah, and speaking of electronics, I have all the extra little triggers and buttons and limit switches, anything I'm gonna to use to activate. It just goes more in line with bringing what electronics you're gonna need. A few of the little extra bits, um, some extra uh, 3D printing filament if your suit is 3D printed. This kind of goes hand in hand with the weld repairing. If you do need to fix anything, I'll bring some of that. On top of that, I will also bring an entire sheet of raft material. This has saved me and friends so many, focus. Focus, focus. There we go. This has saved so many friends of mine. Um, this is literally just a, I maxed out my 3D printer bed. There, there isn't a file for rafts. I have people ask me that. All you're gonna do is drop a file. Focus, focus. It doesn't like the black. Oh, I think that's the problem. Um, oh, there we go. There you can see a little bit of it there. So this is just a maxed out 3D print. I dropped something like a, an alignment cube or a calibration cube, maxed it out, hit print, and then just canceled the print before it got to the actual print. It, it's just a raft. And you can print them at different thicknesses. You can print them, you know, one layer, two layer, five layer, and you can make these as strong as you want. I do not leave home without that, and I'm so sorry about my focus. It just doesn't like the empty black square there. Um, little screwdriver set. These are just good to have, especially for repairing like the Iron Man helmets that have screws and stuff. Um, if you don't have any screws in your costume, you don't need that. Same with the magnets. Magnets, bring them if you need them. I always bring a couple extra. Razor, dealer's choice. And then what is already holding your suit together? My suit has a variety of extra buckles. There is some Velcro in there, so maybe bring some extra of that. So if Velcro starts to fail, there's a lot of Velcro holding a lot of the battery packs in, in there. Uh, maybe some extra foam if I wanna make the helmet a little more comfortable. But that's it. And this stuff does not take up a lot of space at all. Uh, I can pretty much put all of this in a small Ziploc bag and stuff it into the suit. When you start packing these suits, there's a lot of dead space inside of them to hide your clothes or extra materials and just your quick repair kit. Um, honestly, Starboost is so big, I could probably hide repair materials in the backpack here and just walk around like a medic, but I uh, haven't had to do that yet, so luckily I never have to. I think that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. Um, I know I've given a lot of this information out already, scattered across multiple videos, but I wanted a very specific cosplay repair video planted on my channel that I could send to you guys, that you guys could search and just you know use as a quick reference or review. Again, everybody's cosplay is gonna be very different depending on how you built it, the materials you used, and the kind of wear and tear you're putting it through. But I am a very firm believer that if you are going to be really wearing these things to conventions, really putting them through their paces and enjoying them, things are gonna break. These things aren't going 
into space. They're not, you know, military grade, even though that's actually the worst thing you could ever say about anything. Th there's wear and tear, it's normal, um, but just hopefully these little tips help you enjoy them longer while you're out at the con and uh, just embrace the failure, embrace that things are gonna break and wear down and don't be discouraged by it. I've had suits break at cons and had a bail and it kind of sucks, but you just learn from it. So uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in this video, please leave a comment down below. And I'm gonna actually ask you guys real quick to do something I've never asked you to ever do in a single video. If you could share this video with a friend that you think it might benefit. Uh, I haven't posted in a little while, obviously. I've been traveling, so making good long form videos is a little tricky, and the algorithm isn't in, on my side right now. So if you guys could send it to a friend, send it to somebody who's getting into cosplay or might have recently had a break or a failure, yeah, maybe it'll help me out and I really appreciate it. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day. I warned you!